Welcome to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. For each week, we speak with brands, icons, innovators, and trailblazers within the fly fishing industry, exploring both the successes and failures they've encountered along the way to become who they are today. But first, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast or joined our email list, please do so by going to the Fly Fisher Insider Podcast.com, or you can also find us on Instagram at Fly Fisher Insider Podcast. Now let's begin. Welcome to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. Today, our guest is Andrew McLeese. Andrew is the owner of Bluff Line Media. Andrew's here today to tell us more about Bluff Line Media and all the films and stuff that you got going on. Andrew, how's it going? Going well, sir. How are you? Very well. Definitely very well. Um, so where are you based out of right now? You sound like you're in the room with me. Yeah, so um, thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're in northwest Arkansas. Um, right on the western edge of the Ozark region, and so that's sort of our stomping grounds there. Yeah, awesome. Good fishing there. I know we were just talking about that, so uh, you got some great quality fish out there. Um, you know what, Andrew? Here's what I want to do. I want to get into uh, into into bluffline and talk about bluffline um, specifically. But before I do that, like walk us through. I want I want you to paint a picture of who you are, and then your reasoning and, and your passion for starting this bluffline media. Yeah, sure. So uh, my wife and I are from uh, North Mississippi, originally born and raised there, and the fly fishing scene isn't very strong in that area. Um, uh, People do it, but it's just not a a part of the culture. Um, We're both teachers. Uh, We've both been teaching about a decade now. Uh, I'm high school level. She's uh, first grade. And we were working on our master's, and we were looking for places around the the country to move uh, to to broaden our horizons and, and make a little more income uh, once we finish those degrees. And we did not expect really to move to the Ozarks. Um, of course, we vacationed here quite a bit and we loved it. You know, it's a sort of a weekend getaway, uh, the eastern section of this region uh, from North Mississippi. And, uh, but we were looking, you know, at the Front Range in Colorado and, and some of these other places that are a little bit more sort of prominent or popular. Um, but, you know, looking at housing costs and overall economy and teacher pay and just all of these different factors, we just kept coming back to Northwest Arkansas. The region is growing, um, and it's just really a lot of positive things going on here. And, and the Ozarks are beautiful. And we thought, well, they're not the Rockies, you know, but we, if, if we leave here in Northwest Arkansas, we can be to Denver, you know, by, if we leave in the morning, we can be there that evening. So uh, it makes those Western trips a lot easier for us, which uh, used to be a bit more arduous. Yeah. So uh, we packed up and came up here and, and found jobs. And then, you know, I knew that people found a good bit around here, but I'd never really done that. It's about four years ago. Um, and I had been a photographer for years, just sort of doing it on the side. Um, I, I bought a, you know, a little cheap fly rod and, and got out a little bit and was and testing the waters there. Um, and I ended up uh, on a few shoots uh, for some companies, some brands around here um, that, that were filming some guides and, and I met some nice folks and, uh, and just ended up sort of falling into it that way. Um, I really enjoyed it and I thought, well, if I can, you know, sort of marry the, uh, the hobby of photography, or I guess at this point, videography, um, with, with this new hobby that I'm enjoying, um, why not? Let's do it. And so I've, I decided to start up a little company, uh, on the side. We're still teachers. Uh, so that's, that's my primary source of income. And, um, but we're settled in up here and, and I've become, uh, more of a fisherman. Uh, I suppose, uh, I'm a bit more of a photographer than I am an, an angler. Uh, and so that's sort of, uh, I guess, if you were to rate the passions, um, that, that's sort of how it lays out. But uh, it's uh, it's a, been a really uh, fun ride, and I've been able to work on a lot of interesting projects and, and start filming, which I never really knew that I would get into or enjoy so much. 
Awesome. We're going to definitely touch base on uh, a lot of your projects that you just mentioned there, or um, they kind of hinted at, as well as the filming. But before we we do that, I, I mean, you, that intro is pretty uh, pretty detailed there. So I gotta I gotta dig in on that. What what subject do you teach in high school? First of all, um, AP World History. Um, so I sort of tell stories for a living. You know, we work on literacy and mm-hmm. things like that. But you know, I I try to make the story of history enjoyable for the kids which is not always easy you might remember history class in high school um yeah. it's sort of a notoriously boring class so um i i've sort of become more skilled at, at storytelling over the years doing that and so it really translated well in sort of figuring out how to uh, narrate and how to discuss fishing at, at sort of each of these locations and and what to pull out of people for interviews and such and, and give them some direction in that area. That's so I think cool. that, I think it's really helped me a lot uh, in, in that area. You know, I've, I got a dirty secret here. Is that's basically, yeah, um, I, I liked history in high school, to be honest. It was the science and the maths that killed me um, and the English. Yeah, but, but, me too. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I like his, uh, the history and, and learning about the past and whatnot because that's how we learn to go forward. So uh, the the other question I want to ask is, you know, it's funny you mentioned, um, and I know you're sitting there talking about the Ozarks. I just, I can't get that show out of my mind on um, Netflix. Uh, <laughs> and I just picture like, the you know, you're, you're fly fishing and there's that casino there. And so it's just, I don't know why, I'm, I'm, I don't know why my mind went there again. Maybe it's the history, yeah. but it's funny, but, but um is you know when we when i when you talked about the rockies and you're like the rockies are beautiful i'm I'm picturing like the ozarks because i've seen footage from that show now i'm assuming that it's filmed there and and everything's kind of legit but like is is that what like am i wrong to think like i'm just because i've never been there and all you gotta be honest i want to go there i've never been there and with our travel restrictions right now, it would, would take me 14 and a half days to get there because of having to sit somewhere (laughs) but but um is that what it's like? Where it's, it's like like big lakes and they're all like broken up with like feeder feeder streams and stuff. Like walk like walk us through that. Paint the picture. Well, uh, yeah. So that show, um, I suppose culturally, uh, there are some aspects for sure um, of of the culture around the Ozark. Um, that that show is actually filmed in North Georgia, I believe. Um, so it's filmed in the Southern Appalachian region, uh, which you know the mm-hmm. the the shots on the show when, you know, they're out and about, um, it's, it's comparable, you know, that the Ozarks are a, a smaller, uh, it's, it, those arts are actually a plateau. They're not mountains. Um, there's a region of them that's particularly rugged, rugged called the, uh, Boston mountains, but really what the Ozarks is, is a plateau that, uh, limestone and it's been eaten away over time and eroded, yeah. I should say, yeah. uh, to sort of form these, what, what sort of looks like mountains. Um, but, you know, it's nothing like the Appalachian Mountains, even in the Smoky Mountain National Park or anything mm-hmm. like that. Our highest peaks are in the 2000s, oh, okay. 2000 feet range. Yeah. So it's really the valleys. Yeah. And we have great vistas, too. Um, but it's really the valleys that make the Ozarks so great. And there's a lot of people out in these valleys, uh, sort of like the, the couple, the older couple on the show, I suppose, that are growing the uh, heroin. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That are sort of. You know, they want people to leave, leave them alone. They're they're out here sort of because the region is insular, you know, and it's um, they can sort of live how they want to live. Uh, a lot of people live on the land. Um, there's probably, you know, I, I don't know percentages, but there's a good people, good bit of people off the grid, you know. And uh, they just sort of, it's a live eye fair, hands off mentality. There, you know, there's a lot of old guys any old guys with long gray beards out here um, that have seen some stuff, you know, a lot of hunters um, and, and a lot of people that, you know, every bit of meat they eat, they, they killed, you know, a lot of squirrel hunters. Okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, as far as the lakes and the fisheries, you know, there's a, a main vein, so to speak, going through our region of the Ozarks is the white river. Um, and it starts in the Boston mountains and it heads north. Well, it eventually bends back around east and then south again into the Arkansas Delta over to the Mississippi River. Um, and if you know anything about those Delta regions over there, 
you know, we've got the levees built up and flooding is always a concern. So those levees, uh, those levees were built. And up in this region, they began, uh, the Corps of Engineers began building dams uh, to hold back that water uh, to help control that for the farmers below. And uh, so we've got a series of lakes along that. Now, um, there are a number of smaller rivers and creeks. You know, they're great for smallmouth fishing and, and trout fishing as well. Up in Missouri, there's a lot of spring-fed uh, rivers that aren't just very large, uh, that, are, that have great uh, trout fishing in them. And you see that in some of our episodes. But mm-hmm. um, the White River in particular, because of that, um, where, where it pours out, uh, the mouth down there at the, in the Mississippi Delta, Arkansas Delta region, um, we've got Beaver Lake here, which is about 20 minutes from where I live. That's the first. And then up in Missouri on our uh, Arkansas-Missouri border, we have a Table Rock Lake. We have North Fork Lake, which actually does block up the uh, North Fork River. Um, and we have Bull Shoals Lake, which is huge. Um, and below Bull Shoals Dam is really that famous stretch of the white where uh, all those uh, big hogs are, are being caught that you see a lot. Um, and and so that's those dams, you know, while it makes the situation a little bit less uh, natural, you know, uh, as opposed to what you're used to, I uh, imagine, mm-hmm. um, you know, those, those tailwaters are, are outstanding fisheries. Uh, they really are. And they produce some really huge fish. That's, uh, that's awesome. I, cool. Thanks for the history lesson. Definitely. And geography. <laughs> Andrew, let, sure you know, sure when you're, uh, when you're fishing there again, like you're, you're hitting trout, no doubt you're hitting what browns and rainbows. Uh, do you have bull trout there? Like again, I just, and I am not familiar with this. Region. No bull trout. We only, we have browns um, in, in those tailwaters. That's where they really do best. Um, mm. And rainbows. They have introduced uh, Bonneville cutthroats. Yep out of Utah, I believe, or, or um, maybe Wyoming over over near Yellowstone or Tetons, I suppose. Um, we've got Yellowstone cutthroats as well. Um, but those are smaller populations. Really, you know, the bread and butter, it's it's mostly um, rainbows. rainbows. Yeah. And then, yeah. And, and actually over on the Bull Shoals tail, tailwater, they've probably on North Fork as well, they've changed some regulations. I guess statewide, they've changed some regulations and, uh, our uh, rainbows never were really something to write home about or haven't been for quite a while, I guess, since the eighties. Um, and now they are growing. And I mean, it's, it's happened fairly quickly, you know, a, a season passes and these rainbows are getting quite large these days. So we're, we're seeing some, some trophy rainbows, which is, you know, it's, it's exciting to have more than one species that's, that's really growing to those sizes. Why do you think that is? Why do I think what is? Why do you think that you've got those these trophy rainbows coming back and growing? Oh well, they. Um, the, I, I'm not sure of the specifics, and they, forgive me on that. Yeah, on no, uh, the regulations they you. change, but it's in, yeah. Well, people, um, the, the, I'm sure it's the harvesting sizes and the amount of fish folks can harvest. So you know, they they've just been pushing for some conservation efforts over there. You know, there's a lot of guides. Uh, and their livelihood is is being on that river and catching those big fish, and you know the rainbows are just more abundant mm-hmm. than the browns, mm-hmm. and they're just going to be. So now that they're they're allowing them to grow larger with those change regulations, it's it's really benefiting those guys a lot over there. Awesome! I love to see stuff like that come around full circle and, and fish getting bigger and oh, yeah. healthier and stuff like that. So, so the other thing you mentioned was you you know you're a school teacher, but when you know when we talked and you're also the owner of, of Bluff Line Media. And what is Bluff Line Media? Um, it's, it's just me. I have a few photographers that come and help out, uh, mainly to get stills while we're shooting. Um, but a few years back, like I was saying, I was invited to um, a few shoots, one of them for a local company called Rock Monkey, which is just an apparel company. Um, and I met some uh, fishing guides there. One of them, uh, Ben Woodard, invited me to make a film for him. He was starting up a rod company, which ultimately wasn't successful, but um, he wanted to promote that company uh, with a film. And he had uh, sort of a grandiose idea. He said, I want to put together a film on the three 
my three favorite rivers, uh, the White River below Bull Shoals Dam there, uh, the Little Red River um, a little further south. And then down in the Wachita Mountains, we have uh, in southern Arkansas, there's a smaller river there that holds trout called the Little Missouri. He said, I want to make a film about all three of these. Um, sorry if you hear that noise there. I'm remodeling my kitchen. I don't know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we... Uh, I had never made a film before, and I told him that, and his budget wasn't very large. And uh, <laughs> he, he just said he trusted me, and I thought, well, I'll learn something new, um, you know, and it'll hopefully be as good as it can be. Um, and so we gave it a shot, and it was called Flyfish Arkansas. I mean, we didn't catch much fish, but we had a big time, uh, and uh, the scenery was nice, and I felt good about you know sort of how I was able to put it together. I thought, well, I can do better than that, and I didn't want to stop after that. So I mm-hmm. thought, let's just keep doing this. And so I sort of came up with the idea for uh, Ozarks on the Fly, and I thought I'll do a, a series where I just come out with episodes because you know I, Flyfish Arkansas is thirty minutes long. Probably should have been twenty minutes long, but in hindsight. Uh, but uh, that was sort of an arduous project. I thought if I just do these smaller films, you know, 10 minutes or less, I can manage that a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. You know, li- life gets busy. And so we've done six of those already. We did six in a year, which I really couldn't believe. And I was able to do some other little films as well, what, one of which is uh, unreleased that we did out west. And what year is this? What what year did these films all come out? This was, this was all last year. Uh, we sort of filmed the first one in fall of uh, 2018, uh, Ozarks on the Fly, Volume 1, and that was just with a buddy up the road here. Uh, yeah. And at that, was, at that time, it was sort of, you know, I hadn't solidified Bluffline as a, as a business yet. I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was sort of after that, uh, I thought, well, let's keep let's keep going. And so, uh, yeah, we were, we were busy uh, filming and, and had a lot of outings and I was able to put together a lot of films. You know, I just kept getting faster and faster at editing. Um, and so it's, it's been quite a, a, a nice hobby because it, it sort of forces you to get out and, and do some things that you might not otherwise, because life does get busy and, uh, and meet great people. And then it's the challenge of it as well. And pulling it off is, is, you know, there's a lot of reward to that. Oh, of course there is. I, and I mean, People like myself and, and people within the industry, I'm sure, you know, the Instagram world as well, They everyone's just loving the content, right? I mean, it's it's fish porn. How could you mm. not, right? So yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny. I'm sure you're aware of Yako Lucas. He, he always refers to it as fish porn, so. Um, I kind of, kind of, oh, yeah. I kind of got to it as well when we when I did uh, his his interview. Um, <laughs> basically, but like, here's where we're gonna go with this: is like, so you're filming the you're filming these films. You did these these mini series. Like, how has the reaction been to it? I know I've watched them. I, I like them. Uh, and I know that your most recent one, which we'll get into later as well. You know, I, I've watched that as as well because you sent me that to me. Um, how like how's the reaction been? Like, how is this like as a filmmaker? Like, where are you at? With it, well, it's it's one of these things. that's interesting when I, when I started all this stuff. I really, I was fishing just myself, uh, you know, locally around here. I have a few smaller tr- trout streams nearby, and um, and I just wasn't in this world, you know. I was it was sort of a hobby that I did, but I wasn't, you know, sitting down and tying flies and, and watching all these videos. I didn't even know there was this world of fly fishing, sort of independent short films that was. I mean, it's prolific. They just come out all the time, and, and, and everybody loves them, and there's all these filmmakers, and they have these festivals, and I, I didn't know any of this. Um, and so it, it was sort of something I fell into uh, ignorantly, um, but I noticed with Fly Fish Arkansas, uh, gosh, it, it might be pushing 200,000 views in you know a couple of years, and I just couldn't believe how many people Freaking tuned awesome. in. awesome. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> I know. It, 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 was, it was really surprising to me, and I thought, well, there's, there's something there, um, and I don't know. I, it's harder to film fishing probably than a lot of other things, but I just it's it's something I fell into, and I haven't really left it yet at all, and I, I don't see myself doing it. it. I don't know what else. I, what else is there, right? This is the only thing to film and do. <laughs> the, the reception's been outstanding. Um, I, every episode, I just I, our views seem to increase. Um, 
we we have a lot of great comments and supporters. I mean, they're they're actively engaged, it seems, and they're ready for the next one to come out. Um, and it's just it's overwhelming, and it it really drives you to to keep it up and to do it again, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's kind of that's kind of a wild thing that's happened. But I've learned about all these other great guys that are doing this. You know, Gilbert Rowley, yeah, yeah, um, the the Wild Fly guys uh, over in uh, North Carolina. Uh, it's just it's sort of fun to uh, end up in a little community here um, of guys doing this stuff. You know, and I, uh, I do relate to that, obviously, in the podcast world. I, you know what I mean? The guys that are podcasting. I mean, we're all kind of kind of buddies here I'm well we are buddies um mm-hmm. you know what I mean and, and you relate to that and quite often I reach out to some of the podcasting buddies and we just regroup and we talk and what's working what's not working where's the plan what's going on I mean is that what you guys do in the film world like hey, uh you know uh it, it's I, I I get on Instagram and I'll I'll post I'm not I'm not as communicative as I probably should be you know I, I give a lot of thumbs up and uh <laughs> Hey, this is awesome. Uh, you know, sort of words of encouragement. I get a lot of that back. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I need to uh, do it. I have spoken to some different guys, uh, Duke Fish and, and some of these fellows about collaborations. And I, and I think that's down the road for sure. Yeah. You know, it's been tough. We, we had a lot planned for this year. And, and uh, you know, COVID has really put a huge uh, <laughs> bump in the road for us. But, um, yeah, you know, this is this has only been a year I've been doing this, so I'm I'm a real rookie. Uh, but you know, we've we got in the Montana Fly Fishing Film Festival, which I was I was excited about. Uh, we were just in the online um, on June 13th. If you tuned into that, uh, the name of it was, was slipping my mind now. But we had a little online festival in Oregon yes. that we were uh, to be a part of, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get in some of these festivals and, and get involved uh, a bit more as, as the next few years pass. I've got my wife's pregnant right now, so uh, <laughs> with a baby, this is our first baby. So I'll be honest, it's probably going to slow down a bit. I probably won't be uh, able to make as many films uh, next year, or so at least as I as I was able to last year. But that's okay. It's, it's, I, I always found it's a year two that you can't get out as much. Year one, the baby's more with mom, but. Year two. That's that's how it mm. worked in our house for sure. Um, well, that's know, good to know. Yeah, so that's the inside information for you there. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I got a year to pound out as much content as possible. Andrew, speaking of content, <laughs> speaking of content, and speaking of films, what what it what makes a good film in your opinion? What makes like what does a film absolutely need besides fish? What does it need? Like, what does it need to, to draw, to keep me active, to keep me looking? I know you, you mentioned earlier about the time, like you, you know, should have been 20 minutes, not 30 minutes. I mean, that's, that's huge. Yeah. Right. The timing. So walk us through what, you know, to, to those that are listening that might be thinking, Hey, I want to do a film or I want to do YouTube or I want to do this to create, yeah. And grow. What do you, in your opinion, what would what was some advice or what are some things that you've learned that a, a good film needs? Oh gosh, oh gosh. Well, uh, assuming <laughs> that I that I know any of that, uh, a lot of this is just sort of shots in the dark, I suppose. Um, you know, I've, I've noticed that retention. If you look at your retention uh, for your viewers on, on YouTube, you know, people. A lot of people were watching the whole thing. A lot of people, if you don't catch them right away and hook them in, uh, they're gone. And so, you know, on most of my films that I put out, even if they're just 10 minutes, uh, my retention rates are around five to six minutes. And it's it's hard to combat that. It's really hard um, because people just have such short attention spans. So that, that part is always going to be tough. Um, I think the people that really love it, of course, are sticking around for the whole thing. And then there's a lot of folks out there that are um, just sort of clicking through and, you know, fall in there and are, are just can sort of keep moving. Um, but that that's a big thing, finding a way to hook them on the front end. And I, I, I struggle with that still. Um, and that's something I really uh, need to try to work on um, and, and plan to in the future. But it's, it's just a tough thing. Um, you know, there's so many factors. What makes a good one? You know, I, I want the narration. I want a storyline. And, you know, like uh, a lot of these guys that I see it, the, with the, just the great B-roll, with the good camera work, mm-hmm. uh, and, it, you know, just great editing and everything. Um, the Buffet series, 
that uh, Gilbert puts out. Uh, there's no discussion there. It's just, it's all just awesome fishing footage. And that's just awesome. Um, and, and I love it. And, but for me, I want to have some sort of storyline. Figuring out what the storyline is, is always a challenge. Cause you know, in, in large part, you know, it's just some guys going out fishing. <laughs> so it's like, how do you tell that in a way that has a beginning, middle and end? Um, and it's, that sometimes doesn't reveal itself so obviously. Um, with the most recent film we did, Cure, Cure for Cabin Fever, you know, I just, I headed over to Georgia. Those guys invited me over there. And they said, let's make a film. And it was sort of up to me to figure out, well, what is it going to be about? We knew it was going to be about fishing in North Georgia. Well, that's not much of a story. Um, we were lucky enough to have a guy come down from New York um, because his season's closed. And it's like, well, okay, well, maybe... You know, we tell that story. He can't fish up north. It's cold. You know, he's he's just getting pent up up there. He's got cabin fever. Let's head down to Georgia um, and let's go to a place that's a little warmer where the fishing's still great. And so we sort of make that story. And there's a few scenes you have to shoot to kind of tell that story. Um, so we have, you know, the guide sitting at the bar waiting on him to get there. And then he calls and says that he's arrived. You know, we've got him driving down the road. Mm -hmm. So you got to do a little bit of that. But for the most part, after that sort of taken care of, you know, you just get back to the fishing footage and the, the grips and the grins and such. <laughs> and that's the majority of it at the end of the day. It's, you know, it's, that's fun. It's every film's like a little puzzle. You've got to kind of figure out. So sometimes it works out better than others. Absolutely, for sure. It's funny you mentioned that because you know it's like same with same with us. And I'm not comparing podcasting too much to to visual, um, you know, your audio or visual, um, vice mm. versa. That you got to have your story, right? And it's funny because you know you can't just jump into like what are you about. So it's funny how it's you know us and and this is what we are is we're creators and we have to create that picture for somebody. So really good, really cool on you. So I want to go into um, into the, uh, the uh, cure for cabin fever. So you've you've already touched base on it. So this is kind of like your your flagship, right? This is the one that everyone sort of knows you for. Or that's coming around, and, and you know the your your hit, if you will. And people are um, and this was released in COVID, right? So it got a lot of traction from that. This is the one that you submitted to the Montana Fly Fishing Film or Fishing Fly Film Festival, right? Um, yeah, tell us about this. Yeah, so, well, there's actually a few projects there. Um, I, you know, I, honestly, looking at views, probably the Ozarks on the Fly films are, are getting the most attention, at least on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of reason for that is, you know, I'm based here in the region, and so we have a lot of local guides that are watching those. Um, the guys over in Georgia invited me over after seeing that series, and they were sort of, just uh, wanting to get their name out there and help promote uh, yeah. and, and shout out to them. Great guys, Daniel uh, and uh, Russell and all those guys at uh, On the Fly Excursion. Um, but, you know, they have great public water in North Georgia, but they have a ton of really awesome private water streams and small streams that have these huge fish. And I've seen a lot of his pictures. Uh, we had chatted back and forth a bit, but I was lucky enough to, to get over there. Uh, and like that, that was actually the first time sort of a company, and so that that sort of told me something was happening. You know, was mm -hmm. reaching out to me from outside of this region and asking me to, to to do a project for them. So that was that was kind of exciting in that way. Last summer, though, we did go out um, to Southern Wyoming, Northern Colorado. I uh, chatted some with this girl uh, Brooke Belalabic, um, who lives near Steamboat Springs, and she paints trout and she does commissions. And we made a film with her, which I still haven't released um, because we that's the one we actually entered into the Montana Festival. Um, and we've got it in the Stimmies, uh, the awards right now in the running. Hopefully we win something there. That'd be fun uh, with Fly Fusion Mag and all their affiliates. Um, but that's the one that's sort of still sitting back right now. I, you know, it's... You're holding back uh, the goods. Those are the only two films... Yeah, we we those are the only two films we've done outside of the Ozarks so far. But uh, but I really would like to do more of that and do more traveling. But at the same time, there's there's still a lot of stories here locally 
mm-hmm. that I'm wanting to tell. I, I want to make 10 of these Ozark on the Fly films. And so we're, we've got four more to do. And so I'm sort of right now kind of planning out those and trying to figure out where to go from here to finish that up. Yeah. It sounds, um, sounds awesome. You know, it's funny that you mentioned like, so you're, you're really focused regionally and regionally on the Ozarks. Um, and now you mentioned you want to travel. What are some of the ideas or what's some of the, the destinations? I mean, obviously it's crossed your mind um, of where you'd like to film or create films. Oh yeah. Well, up around uh, your way is uh, not too, not too shabby. Um, so I'd love to come up there, uh, do something in Canada. Um, not, not too far from here. They have the red drum down in, uh, uh, Southern Louisiana, and in in the fall, um, those bulls are just massive, mm-hmm. and so I'd like to do a little saltwater film down there. I've chatted with some dupe fish fellas, um, Christian, mm-hmm. uh, about doing something like that maybe this fall. We'll see how COVID plays out. We're sort of having a resurgence right now. Our numbers are going up uh, quite a bit right now in Arkansas. So who's to, who's to say what we'll be able to do this fall? But the red drum down there would be just a lot of fun in those, those marshes, but, um, just more out, out West. I I love going out West and really anything in the Rockies, Montana, over to the coast. I, like I told you earlier, I I lived out in Seattle a while and and I'd love to go back up there and and just Northwest region and, and do more of anything because that's just one of my, the greatest places on earth to me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, those Pacific Northwest is so beautiful. A little wet, but beautiful. Um, it's funny. We'd I'd love to get you up here as well, just to promote our Stillwater. Um, and I know we were talking off air about Stillwater fly fishing and how passionate I am in growing that. And and I know it is growing quite quite a bit in in the lower forty eight. Um, for you guys, uh, it's it's growing and kind of yeah. taking off uh, a fair bit. And COVID actually, when river closures were happening, people were closed. It, it kind of really caught on during COVID uh, times. So it's good to see a lot of guys yeah. are getting out there and doing that for sure. Um, you know, you talk about yeah, we uh, yeah, quit yeah. Uh, well, t- to that point, um, I, I haven't filmed on uh, Stillwater yet, um, and. I think two of these uh, Ozark on the Fly films, we're going to look at that uh, near here in the lake, and a, a lot of the lakes uh, in the Ozarks have uh, striper. They brought them in and introduced them. You know, it's a saltwater fish, but they, they did quite well in our, our freshwater lakes here. Um, and so the striper fishing in, in these lakes can be really, really great. And so I think we're going to try to do an episode there. Um, and then... Um, <laughs> carp fish, uh, trash fish. Uh, we're yeah. going to look at a carp episode um, up on a reservoir in Missoula, not far from here as well. Uh, so it's it's very different, and you know everybody loves the rivers, but I, I'm with you. There's there's a lot of great fishing to be had on these lakes. Yeah, you bet. Is there no? Do you partner up, or do you like work for funding or anything like that with, say, like Tourism Arkansas? Like, would they? Is there grant money for something like this? Because I mean, if you're doing ten episodes. You're, the way I see it is you're doing 10 episodes at 20, 20 a, a pop, um, 20 minutes a pop. Like you're, you're, you're really promoting the fishery there, which makes guys like me want to get down there and fish, um, and we'll spend mm-hmm. money. So is there, is that ever yeah. a way that you're, you know, you're working things into the, into the, yeah. the business plan, if you will? Well, you know, it's, it's really tough at first, um, when you're just starting out because you don't have much of a, a portfolio, you know, you, you, you've got to sort of build up your work so that you've got something to show them. Um, so on the front end, I just sort of was doing it just for fun. Um, and I ended up, uh, with a few sponsors, you know, you always reach out to uh, companies and, and see if they like to sponsor with some funds. Um, and so you send out a lot of emails like that before a project. And if you get a few sponsors and Smith has been good to us, Smith optics and, uh, moonshine rods in particular, Moonshine, Tate, all those guys in Moonshine are just really great. And they've, they've really been improving their rods and, and they've just got some awesome stuff going on there. They're, they're doing really well. Um, so we've, we've gotten a few sponsors to, to send us some goodies and a few funds, you know, to help out, uh, with sort of gas and food, <laughs> things like that. I, I'm always able to sort of get some free lodging and such. Wherever we go, we just reach out and say, Hey, you know, let's put your logo on the film and promote your, your lodge. Um, and 
because this is targeted at your, you know, your, your clientele, your patrons. So the, those things, it sort of pays for itself, but you don't end up putting a lot of pocket money uh, in. But um, no, we have actually started discussions with Arkansas Tourism. We're working on putting together a, a full documentary actually on the Buffalo National River, which was uh, back in 72, I believe, is America's first national river. They were going to dam it up uh, like uh, the others, and uh, Arkansans stood up and said, no, this is special to us. You've built enough dams. Let's let this one flow, flow through it free. So they, they accomplished that, and uh, it's, it's sort of the heart of the Ozarks in a lot of ways. So I, I contacted uh, Arkansas, and uh, they are on board, and they are funding us, And but COVID is again, <laughs> sort of stopped. We were going to begin filming on that this summer, and we haven't been able to yet. Uh, but hopefully um, a full, you know, 45, 55-minute documentary on the uh, Buffalo National River uh, will be coming out from us in the next year to year or two. It, you know, that's a big project, so that's going to take a while. And that's going to divert a bit from the fishing. We're definitely going to have fishing in it. We're going to float the lower 30-mile uh, section, which is just total wilderness, and uh, fish for smallies and gar and whatever else we can find down there. Maybe catch some turtles, too. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, we're going to, of course, showcase all the other activities along that, that National River as well. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that sort of that sort of stuff does come, you know, and we've, we've talked to lodges from in Argentina about coming down and, you know, things like this. No, uh, what are the for, lo- for a lot of that stuff to come to fruition, it takes some time, but it's what, happening. What do the lodges say? What are, like what is do people? I mean, now that people are finally reaching out to you guys and taking you guys serious, taking Buffline serious as a media player and, and a filmmaker. Um, what it, like? What do you guys were, talk about? Like, I'm going to come down and promote the lodge. I always curious because we have our lodge program as well. Um, but yeah, let's mm-hmm. let's hear kind of what you're uh, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, and you see, uh, Fly Lord uh, does a good bit of this, um, and I think you know it's just one of those things. It's, it's uh, there's some different discussions that I've had, and they're sort of interesting. So this is some advice, I suppose, to people looking into trying to do this sort of thing. You know, it's it, it costs a lot to just get to these places, right? So you've got you've got the airfare, and then if you're staying with them at a lodge, you know, you're, you're taking up rooms that otherwise would go to paying customers, you know, if they're putting you up. Um, so it's sort of, it's, it's a really expensive proposition for the lodges um, to, to have you down um, if they are the sole sort of, you know, uh, funders. Um, if you can pull some uh, sponsors together to help fund it, um, so you get three or four or five sponsors to, to help with some funds and they're all sort of chipping in, um, then maybe they can sort of help uh, cushion that cost of the lodge. Um, so I run into that a little bit and, and those are tough things to accomplish. You know, it's, it's good advertising for all, but you've really, you've got to build up a really good um, uh, viewership first. You know, a lot of these guys are definitely further along in that than, than I am. Uh, Fly Lords is a great example of that. They've really built quite the quite the media empire uh, a bit, I suppose. That might, might be too generous. I don't know, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, but you know, or like Hook up in your neck of the woods, not, not your neck of the woods, I suppose, but Quebec, still yeah. Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but those guys uh, have really accomplished that, and they've they've created something that you know, sort of, they were able to quit their day jobs, I imagine, for the most part. Um, so I, I don't know that that's a bluff line goal exactly, but if, you know, if the uh, opportunities started pouring in, you know, and it, it, it's hard to say no to that stuff. So you, you sort of have to decide uh, how much you're in uh, and sort of what you can do and, and to balance life and work and all that family. It's just all part of it. Yeah, it gets harder when you have kids and you're away more frequently. I thought I can tell you from experience, so. Um, you mentioned goals. What are some, what are some company goals you have going forward? Yeah, right now uh, I would like to get that. Uh, it's sort of a one at a time for me at the moment, honestly, that life's been so busy. Um, 
<laughs> you know, so I, I do want to get Ozarks on the Fly done. I would like to get ten episodes completed, um, and sort of just have that comprehensive. I feel like if you've got ten episodes, all different stories, all different fisheries from around the Ozarks, I've really told the story of fly fishing in this region um, as completely as as anybody ever has, and I think that would I would feel really great about that. Um, and so that that's a big one for me. And, and I hope to get that done in the next year to two years um, as things slow down a bit. But also this documentary on the Buffalo is, uh, if we can get this done, it will be a huge accomplishment. And that's just such a, a beautiful place. And that would be just so much fun. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of those things where you know, these short films are great on YouTube and, and for some of these festivals, but that would be a full, full length documentary. Um, and so that, that would probably open up some big doors for us. Uh, if we did it well, and I feel confident enough now, you know, it's, it's not something I would have tried to tackle two years ago. Um, but I feel like I've had a, enough practice now to where I, I, I could probably pull it off. Um, <laughs> and you know, that's, that's tepid there, but we'll see. Definitely. And you know, we definitely wish you luck in, uh, in all those goals. It sounds like this, fly fishing in Arkansas is a, a really dear to your heart and a big project. Um, and we definitely want to support you in that as well. So make sure when you get those episodes, those done, you tag us or, or send them to us. Cause we want to play those on our platform for you for sure. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what, Andrew? Well, I just have yeah, to say, yeah. um, there's, there's, there's legends around here and it's really is, a lot of people probably overlook the those Ark region or Arkansas, and it's it's a mistake. I mean, we've got a lot of awesome guys around here: Dwayne Hada, and, um, Dave Whitlock, uh, some of these mm-hmm. older guys that have been around, and just um, the the fishing, the the quality of the fishing, the diversity of the fishing. It's, it's just the beauty of the region. It's it's really something, and and I guess I'm. Yeah, I'm wanting to get it on the map a little more. Of course, you know, it's probably one of those things where a lot of folks are, well, it's, it's, a, it's a secret. Don't don't tell everybody, you know, don't tell anybody. But, but I don't know. I think people ought to know. I do, too. I mean, you're not giving away the, the, the hole in the GPS location, so, you know. <laughs> right. Right. And, and again, if, if people go down there from out of state or out of, out of country, I mean, chances are I'm hiring a guide. You know, so you're giving back. You're you're supporting that and growing that community mm-hmm. and that that sport and that fishery and in, in the you know. So it's all good. We we're we're behind you on that. So definitely one of the most fulfilling things that's uh, that's been said to me since I've started all of this. You know, you get comments on the videos and that's great. But uh, my guide friend over on the white uh, Matt Milner with Rising River Guides, he says after he was in one of our episodes, he says, you know. I, I've gotten jobs off of this. People, people have told me that they called me because they saw me in your film. And that's just, to me, that's invaluable. That's awesome. So. Yeah. yeah, but that's where it goes. That's, that's full circle. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So really, really good on you for sure. Andrew, before I let you go, do you have any last words for the listeners out there? Stay safe and uh, use common sense. <laughs> I don't know. I appreciate you having me on, man. It's uh, it's a wild time right now, um, but hopefully things will get back to normal sooner than later. Yeah, and you know, hopefully they do. Uh, but in the meantime, if someone wanted to reach out to you, find you guys, follow you on Instagram, look at your films, all that sort of stuff, where could they find you and locate you at? Yeah, sure. So Bluffline Media, B L U F F, Bluffline Media uh, on Instagram. We're on Facebook as well. Uh, and of course, on, on YouTube, that's where we post all the films. We just decided that would be home. So uh, just type in Bluffline Media on YouTube, and our channel's right there. Please subscribe to the channel. That's that's big for us. We have finally got monetized uh, this spring. So um, check those films out, and it's a big help to us. Perfect. I'm going to make sure I put all those details uh, within the show notes. So, Andrew, I want to thank you for being our guest today on the Fly Fishing Insider podcast. And listeners, I want to thank you guys as well. Thanks a lot, Andrew. You bet. Thanks for having me, man. No worries. You've been listening to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. If you like this podcast episode, please let us know. Leave a review and subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast listening platform.